I'm in section eight of the Canadian Electrical Code and section of the 2024 Canadian Electrical Code. And this, this section is called circuit loading and demand factors. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about section eight, rule 100, which is current calculations. It's very important. I'll tell you why it's important, why it is there, what it comes from, and we'll do an example problem so that you can take a look at what the math, um, how the math plays out. So this rule uh, says, let me read you the rule. It says, when calculating current that will result from loads expressed in watts or volt amps to be supplied by a low voltage AC system, the voltage divisors to be used shall be 100, sorry, 120, 208, 240, 277, 347, 416, 480, or 600 as applicable. That's what the whole rule says. It says when you're calculating currents, you have to use these voltage divisors. Why is this? This is because these are the only supply voltages in Canada. So your regular old plugs used to be 110 volts, but now a regular plug in Canada is 120. Uh, 120 over... 12240 are dedicated branch services. Um, and you know what we have in our houses is single phase three wire, 12240 volt mostly. There's so that's the 120. That's why we have this divisor of 120 here and 240. Um there are also three phase four wires at 12208. There are three wire uh at one at uh, 12208 as well. These are all 60 Hertz, by the way. Um, there are some large three phase four wire systems at 12208. Uh, uh, There's some three phase four wire at 347, 600, et cetera. So these are all the divisors that are basically the only supply voltages available in Canada. So why do we want to divide by them? Well, there's two reasons. It's so that you are consistent in your calculations and you get the same current. And it's so that you don't calculate a lower current. Let's say you use the actual supply voltage that is going to a load. If you use that instead of the supply voltage that it could be, then it, it'll be lower, right? What's actually going to load is going to be a lower voltage than the possible supply voltage available to you. And if that is lower, then simple Ohm's law, V equals IR, when you rearrange for current, voltage divided by resistance, if the voltage is lower, that's in the numerator, you're going to have a lower current. So you're going to be designing for a lower current, you're going to be undersizing your conductors. And then if the rated current gets applied, which it could in the future, then of course, then you're gonna overload that circuit. It's also because the CSA testing on equipment that comes up with the name plates that we talked about in section two of the code um, uses these standard calculations. So let's do an example so that I can show you how the math works out. And in order to do this example, we should remember sort of our Ohm's law and our power uh, versus resistance and current calculations. So just as a review, we should know the following relationships. We should definitely know Ohm's law, which is V equals I R. Voltage is current times resistance. And of course you can rearrange that in lots of different ways, but I don't like rearranging. Uh, formulas until I need to use them. This is not free formulas rearranged in three ways and put into a triangle. It's V equals IR, and that's all you have to remember. And similarly, power is the relationship of current times voltage. Power, P equals IV. And if we do some substitutions with uh, Ohm's law, we can also come to the relationship that that power is equal to I squared R. And uh, power, if we rearrange that again, power is equal to V squared over R. So those are the relationships that we have to work from here. 
And in this question, I am asking you to compare using one of these supply voltages that are available in Canada, namely 240 supply voltage, or uh, what is actually getting to this load, which is only 230. So let's take a look at the current that we would design, we would use to design this system if we only used 230. So let's do this calculation twice. I'm going to do this calculation for 230 volts. And you can write some notes and do this with me if you're practicing for your exam. And I'm going to do it for uh, 240 volts. And now this, this is not to code. It is not to code for section eight rule 100 current calculations because you have to divide by a standard voltage, which is 240 in this case. So that is not to code. So I am saying, what would the current draw be? Let me read the question. Uh, 200 kilowatt, 240 volt single phase heated load has a nameplate rating of this current. If the supply voltage is reduced to 230, what would the current draw actually be? Well, I would use good old Ohm's law, V equals I R, thank you Ohm. And I would rearrange that for the current because I'm saying, what would the current draw actually be? So that would be voltage over resistance. I'm going to do the same thing over here for 240 volts. I'm going to go V equals I R. For clarity, I'm showing you I'm doing exactly the same thing. I is V over R, which we should know. And then I'm going to substitute in. Well, I also have the relationship that uh, we, we don't know resistance in this case. So I'm going to calculate resistance with what we know. Uh, so let's write at the top here what we know. It's always nice to write what you know so that you can get through your your exams properly. Uh, what do we know? We know, let's put what we know over here. We know um, V is the system voltage, which is 240 volts. We know that um, that uh, P is the load. Now the Canadian Electrical Code does not use P for load, but this is, so I'll just write it here for clarity. What I mean by P is the power and what is called in your Canadian Electrical Code is the load. So this is in the context of Ohm's law, the power that we need to use is the load, which is 20 kilowatts which means 20,000 watts. And I just don't have really enough room to put this conversion in here. And R is the resistance, which we don't know, but we could calculate by using a relationship because I do need to put it in Ohm's law. So R is equal to V squared over P. And I just got that from this relationship here. All right, which really just come from combining these two relationships, which is our our basic electrical knowledge, like our fundamental electrical knowledge that we should we should know. So let me, in case you don't know that, let me keep it color coded down here. Then we would have over V squared P. There we go, because that's what R is. And we'll just put V on the top in red like we had it. All right, so this is our current for each one. Now, let me try to scroll a little bit and we can do our calculation, which seems uh, easier said than done. Let me see here. If I can scroll this way, there's my handwritten calculation. I just give myself a bit more room on this screen. Okay, so in this case, in the case that we're doing it wrong, then we would get, once we substitute in and solve this, we would get 230 volts 
over v squared p uh, 240. squared over the power, which is 20,000 watts. And whereas this one done correctly would use 240 volts, which is the supply voltage, which this very rule, Canadian Electrical Code 8100 tells us to do. And that would, again, go under 240 volts. Squared. Over the 20,000. If I were doing this on pencil, I could do the math a lot. Nicer for you. Uh, this is going to end up being, once you punch it in your calculator, uh, 79.9 amps, whereas this is going to be 83.3 amps. And hopefully you're following along and writing this down as well while I take the time to do it kind of slowly here. 79.9 amps. Now, do you say to yourself, oh, close enough, no problem. No, you don't say to yourself, close enough, no problem. Because the problem is, so over here when we've done it wrong, we have 79.9 amps. Over here, we've done it correctly. It's 83.3. So this is this comes out with a lower current. So the, the branch circuit and feeder calculations all have a lower current. This is not good. This means we are going to undersize the conductors because we're gonna size them for a lower current. We are going to overload these branch and feeder circuits if the rated current, which is 240 volts, actually gets applied to the feeder or the branch circuit. So therefore, I would like to conclude that Rule 8100 establishes a standard base to ensure the safe installation within allowable voltage ranges by using standard voltages instead of uh, the actual voltage that is applied to the load.